Hello, my name is Cyclones Oz, and today we're going to be discussing this developing tropical cyclone in the Coral Sea. It's kind of the only big deal in terms of weather happening across Australia right now, so it will be getting all of my attention in this update. You can see it's starting to wrap itself up quite nicely in the or more towards the central eastern parts of the Coral Sea, just the northwest of New Caledonia. And it's already delivering some pretty heavy rainfall to said New Caledonia and Vanuatu. Now, it isn't an Australian cyclone threat at this stage. In fact, all of the forecast model ensembles have backed off from calling this an Australian region cyclone threat. However, we will still take a look at the forecast and see what is in store for this region of the world because it will have an impact on the Australian weather across at least the next seven days and possibly even longer. If you are brand new to the channel and you do want to show some support, then please do consider subscribing and also leave a like on the video while you're at it. Your support is greatly appreciated and leave some feedback or a weather report for your location in the comment section down below. I'd love reading all of them. So taking a look at the system, you can see blowing up some good thunderstorm activity, or it was a couple of hours ago at least, and it's already blowing up that thunderstorm activity across what looks to be a defined centre of circulation. As we get into the visible um, imagery, we'll see what's actually going on throughout uh, the current hours of this storm. Um, you can see that it's got some really nice rotation happening in the lower levels of the system. And I would go as far to say that this is classifiable as a tropical depression, meaning that it's got a closed low level center of circulation. It is still a rather broad low pressure system here, and it's not very tight or spinning that fast but it's looking really decent um, for a tropical low that's barely classifiable at this stage. I reckon that this actually has a better chance of developing uh, than what the Bureau of Meteorology is giving it. If it becomes a tropical cyclone, it might actually do it in the next two days, considering its appearance right now. Um, we'll switch it over to the infrared satellite imagery, which gives us an idea of how tall the thunderstorm clouds are, and generally speaking, the taller, the stronger the storms and the stronger the system. You can already see the storms blowing up thunder clouds that are about the, into those reds and blacks and browns, uh, that means that the convection or the thunderstorm activity is pretty tall here. It's got some pretty strong thunderstorms wrapping up around its center. They're very disorganized at this um, time, which is why there's a lot of this sort of messy convective bubble bath activity happening towards the southern side of the system. And I know these colors mean basically nothing to just the average tropical cyclone tracker, but uh, this does give a good idea of how strong the thunderstorms are around the center of uh, circulation here. And considering they're over the center of the storm, I would go as far to call this maybe a tropical depression, which is, I guess you could convert that to a tropical low in the Australian region. Um, and it's looking really, really decent at this time. It's already starting to really blow up some outflow features as well towards the eastern side. You're probably not going to be able to see it properly on uh, this frame here, but there's these wispy clouds up in the higher parts of the atmosphere. That's what we call cyclone outflow. Uh, it's one of those cirrus clouds that blow anti-clockwise out of the tropical cyclone. And it means that the storm is uh, it, it's really healthy. Um, I don't want to get too far into it because I could spend a whole hour talking about how the, uh, what every type of cloud in this tropical cyclone means or tropical low means. Uh, but it just basically means that this storm is looking very healthy at this time. Now, it's these wispy clouds down at the bottom, these lower level clouds that uh, have actually caught my eye. These are the ones with gusty showers and also some pretty strong winds in them. And it's when they get themselves up to the Queensland coast, on which way they will between the Gold Coast and up towards Macau. High. This way we'll be seeing some damaging winds extend across the Queensland coastline and possibly some brief periods of heavy rainfall. Um, however, it looks like this tropical low and cyclone, when it becomes a cyclone, will be far enough on sh offshore uh, to not be causing too much um, drama from those sort of inflow features. The real deal on inflow features is sort of down here. I know it's really deceptive because on the infrared satellite imagery, there's really no intense thunderstorms blowing around Vanuatu and then towards New Caledonia, but there's a lot of rainfall already starting to fall on the eastern side of New Caledonia. In fact, they're recording rainfall totals approaching 100 millimeters already for today, and the rainfall's only going to pick up. Already though, cyclone win, uh, winds down towards the southern side of New Caledonia, well this will be cyclonic wind gusts, but winds of 70 kilometers an hour on the southern side, and then we've got a ship over here, or maybe that's a reef actually, winds of 40 kilometers an hour. This is definitely a strong tropical low, and it's closer to becoming a cyclone than what we initially thought, and I guess what the Bureau of Meteorology has thought as well, because they've only given this a 10% chance of uh, development today. I reckon that this is probably a higher 30 to 35 or 40% chance of development. It's actually quite close to becoming a tropical cyclone and it's caught me rather off guard if you can't tell by the sound of my voice right now. Now we're going to take a look at the radar imagery just for New Caledonia and see what rainfalls 
uh, coming through. I'm going to keep this short and sweet. Over the next uh, two hours or so, you can see quite a lot of rainfall already starting to move through parts of New Caledonia. It's really slow moving, and this is a moderate to heavy rainfall that will be dumping quite uh, significant rainfall totals. You're talking at least 100 to 150 millimeters for the day, and maybe even more for one or two locations as well. Now, let's jump into the forecast for this system because I know that's what a lot of you guys are here for, just to see what's going on. And I also started a comment yesterday uh, about a, a guy heading on a cruise ship towards New Caledonia and Vanuatu. I think it was on Friday. Uh, that cruise might actually get postponed because, as you'll see in a minute, uh, the cyclone actually intensifies into a said tropical cyclone by around Thursday or Friday, as per the model guidance. Or maybe it's a little bit later now. I think yesterday they were calling for Saturday or Sunday, but it looks like by Friday, which is right now, keeping track of time in the bottom part of your screen, mind you. You can see it's already quite a strong tropical low here with strong winds on the northern side and also on the southern side as well. And it's definitely looking to trying to become a tropical cyclone of which it does actually achieve by Saturday by the looks of things with what looks to be near cyclonic or at cyclonic winds wrapping about three quarters of the way around the center. Now this is a very, very messy system to look at on the model imagery. Now this tells me that this storm is going to be very broad in a couple of days. If it doesn't develop today, it will be a very broad, messy system. Uh, it will not have a tight low level center of circulation and it'll have some really bad thunderstorm activity occurring around its center. Um, and that will mainly be because of wind shear. Wind shear is going to be very hostile for this tropical cyclone as it moves past Vanuatu and New Caledonia, and it'll be ripping this storm apart. So it'll definitely be having a harder uh, time around Vanuatu and New Caledonia by around next weekend. By Sunday, it looks like it blows through Vanuatu into Monday morning, and it really weakens off here. I think it gets absolutely blasted by wind shear as it heads to Fiji, but then it makes that U-turn around, a really slow sort of stalling pattern here, and this is where we're going to be seeing rainfall totals start to skyrocket. But again, it's only going to be it's kind of a really messy system with one or two thunderstorms. It's not going to have these big, giant, persistent thunderclouds over the center. As you can see on the rainfall imagery, there's barely any rainfall happening around the center of the storm. It's going to look like a subtropical cyclone at this point um, because of winter. It's just going to be so hostile for this tropical low as it moves through Vanuatu. And there is a chance this storm also completely doesn't get named. It misses out on being named uh, because of wind shear or because it takes its time and procrastinates. That's probably about a 50-50 chance of happening as well at this time. Let's take it right back to the start. Um, I'm not going to take a look at the GFS because it's basically identical to the Eastern Relief. We'll take a look at the Access though because it's um, a similar picture to the Eastern Relief in terms of track, but then it varies a little bit towards the end. Um, but it's got a wildly different picture for intensity. Now, the Access has a tendency to blow up tropical cyclones in the Australian region, and it's not a model that I tend to use to look at uh, long term forecasts. Anyway, the Access is calling for this storm to intensify quite a lot more significantly than what the Eastern Relief model model has initially called for. Um, you can see it blows it up by around Friday into a fully fledged tropical cyclone. It looks like it actually becomes a category two strength tropical cyclone. And then it runs for category three strength severe tropical cyclone status come out around uh, Saturday just before Sunday. You can see already here with winds peaking nearly 100 kilometers an hour and wind gusts much stronger approaching 120, 130 kilometers an hour. In fact, 140 in one or two spots with that very defined eye before it actually makes that direct landfall on New Caledonia as a still strengthening 969 millibar uh, system with winds of 150 kilometers an hour. Very, very strong indeed. Um, thankfully though, it doesn't look like this forecast will materialize and it does actually get blasted by shear, which is a common theme between all these forecast models come around uh, Sunday and Monday as it moves between Vanuatu and New Caledonia. It really looks like the environment will be quite hostile for the tropical cyclone come around Sunday or Monday and it will be terminally weaken weakening by then. But still, the access has one little twist up its sleeve come around Tuesday and Wednesday, it looks like it swings it towards the Queensland coastline and it still holds on intensity as it moves towards the um, northwest of Norfolk Island and towards Lord Howe Island. It still looks like it, it is still a tropical cyclone at this point, but it is a very weak system and it's also quite a, a broad system with a very ill-defined low-level center here. And it's, I mean, I would struggle to call this a tropical cyclone or be able to classify this as a tropical cyclone if I was the Bureau of Meteorology. This is a really messy and quite frankly an ugly looking system at this point. And I don't think that this is going to be 
a tropical cyclone come around next week. Uh, and again, this is quite a weird track for a tropical system to take in the Australian region. So even though it does look like in this model forecast that New South Wales and Queensland are on notice to receive an impact, I highly doubt that they'll ever receive an impact beyond a couple of gusty showers from this tropical system. So nothing worth worrying about if you do live in what could be the firing line, I guess, um, from the forecast models. Now let's take a look at maximum forecast rainfall here. We're going to take a look at the Eastern BF because it's the only model that's really worth it, wasting our time on. Quite a lot of rainfall is expected across some locations in the South Pacific, especially over New Caledonia too. We could be seeing some places pick up up to 200 millimetres. Once again, nothing to write home about. New Caledonia is very tropical and a lot of the island receives more than 2,000 millimetres a year, but 200 could still be a month's worth of rainfall here. It could cause some flash flooding and also some minor to moderate riverine flooding. So if you live in a flood prone area from New Caledonia, first of all, hello, greetings from Australia. And second of all, uh, make sure you're watching the forecast very closely because there is the chance that you guys get flooded um, in around five or so days time, probably around the weekend when this tropical cyclone will be moving through between New Caledonia and Vanuatu is what will likely be a category one strength tropical cyclone at this point. Port Villa as well on Vanuatu could receive up to 150 millimetres of rainfall from the passage of this tropical cyclone and there could be one or two places on Vanuatu that pick up up to 200 millimetres of rainfall as well as this storm moves through. So quite a bit of rainfall could be expected there. The majority of the rainfall looks like it's going to be concentrated offshore with one or two spots expecting up to 800 millimetres. Uh, so some of the islands between Vanuatu and New Caledonia might receive a substantially higher amount of rainfall than the, I guess, mainland areas of Vanuatu and New Caledonia. Um, but again, that rainfall is quite hard to predict at this point. And considering the storm's going to be stripped bare of any significant thunderstorm activity come next week, it's going to be very difficult to actually predict the rainfall uh, forecasts because, I mean, yeah, the fewer the thunderstorms around this tropical cyclone, the fewer the rainfall will actually be. Um, we'll just briefly take a look at wave heights as well, come around Saturday and Sunday, just taking a look at what's expected. Uh, definitely some pretty big waves can be expected, up to four or five metres. That's approaching uh, 15 feet between uh, Vanuatu and Port... Uh, uh, not Port Villa, um, New Caledonia, that's the place. <laughs> a bit of a brain fart right there. So some pretty large wave heights, and it's not advised that you guys go boating um, next weekend or even from about Friday till about maybe, I'd say, Tuesday or Wednesday. Really wait for these waves to subside. Um, and if you are... A relying on fishing or something around Vanuatu, then just really stay in pre protected coves because these waves are very large indeed. They're quite dangerous and coupled with damaging winds that will definitely be causing some pretty uh, very nasty sea conditions. So it's just advised to be as safe as possible when around the water. And if you live in a place that's prone to coastal flooding as well from these significant wave heights, then it's also a good idea to be taking the necessary precautions. Uh, probably by around Thursday, the detailed forecast update on Thursday, I'll be giving you all of the places that need to prepare for a tropical cyclone impact so watch the thursday video and i'll be giving you a detailed look at what locations need to prepare but anyways starting to waffle on a little bit here thank you so much for watching this video it's been a pleasure presenting the weather forecast on this developing tropical cyclone to you if you want to show some support then please do consider hitting the subscribe button and also leave a like on the video while you're at it your support is greatly appreciated and leave a weather report or a um, be, piece of feedback, I guess, in the comment section down below as well. I'll try and get back to all of them today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.